Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I am here continuing my reviews for the Die Hard series. As you can see, this is the Die Hard Ultimate Collection. But of course, I am here to talk about Die Hard with a Vengeance. This is a 1995 film that brings back the original director of the first Die Hard movie, John McTiernan. The plot is we see John McClane once again, played by Bruce Willis, who is back in New York as a lieutenant, but he's been suspended. He's not really doing all too well as far as his career goes, or even his life. He's not with Holly anymore. They're separated, and he's just been drinking and drinking. He looks like hell until this one terrorist starts causing mayhem in New York. He's leaving bombs in random locations and blowing stuff up, killing people. And he specifically asks for McLean. So McLean not only has to go along on this wild goose chase along with Zeus, played by Samuel L. Jackson, the two of them are going along with these riddles, trying to solve these clues to figure out not only who Simon is, why is he doing this, but to stop him from unleashing these bombs in the city. Now, what I think of Die Hard with a Vengeance is I love this movie. I do. I really enjoy it. In fact, it is my favorite Die Hard sequel of the films. And I think a lot of that has to do with John McTiernan coming back because he also produced the movie. I think he had a lot of say as far as what to do with this franchise, not to make it the same as the first two films. And, and they really did something different here. First, Bruce Willis as John McClane is great. I love Bruce Willis, especially as this character. To see him so many years later, and he is in a slump, and he is kind of just downbeaten it's sad. It is sad in a way to see that like he doesn't end up with Holly like we hoped that he would and that he's been drinking and that he's just kind of going to hell. At least the movie doesn't spend a whole lot of time on it. You just kind of see him at the beginning and he is where he is. But the movie doesn't beat you over the head with the fact that his life is shit and make you feel too depressed about it. And the first thing that this Simon guy has McLean do is to go out in Harlem and stand out there with a sign that says, I hate niggers. Holy fuck. That's like, that's something that not only am I surprised that this movie did, but to see Bruce Willis have a John McClane having to go out there and do it, it's quite hilarious in a lot of ways. And, and you're just waiting for something bad to happen because of it. Now, Samuel Jackson as Zeus, when he sees this, here's a guy who's just... He owns a small store on the street and he sees what's going on and he just doesn't want any more trouble to have to happen. But he's clearly a good guy. He's there to help him out and he saves him from this gang that's about to kill Bruce Willis. And then he almost indirectly, accidentally because of this, gets thrown into the plot and has to deal now with Simon. Has to work with Bruce Willis. And Samuel Jackson throughout this movie, you could say that he's overly racist. You could say that all he thinks about or sees is white people and, and he's very against them in a lot of ways. And some people could say, oh, come on, why can't we have a black character who's not racist or not like that? But I'm OK with this. I'm OK with this, not only because Samuel Jackson, you can buy him like he pulls that off being a guy who feels that way and acts that way, but he can also do that in a likable way to where he's not a complete asshole racist. You don't dislike him because of any of that. Here's a guy at his age who's been living in Harlem. Uh, like I can buy that he's seen some shit and he's gone through some experiences. Hell, if a movie was made today with a black character that felt this way and, and thought this way about white cops or whatever, like you would buy it today more so than almost ever. Jeremy Irons plays Simon, the main villain of the movie. And at first, you don't know what to make of him. At first, to me, he comes off like Edward Nigma, the Riddler. He comes off as a guy who just, he has these riddles. 
he he's just spouting them off randomly and almost he knows that it's near impossible to figure them out or if you do figure them out then it's almost pure luck and that's what i do like about it though i do like the mystery of that and how he just spouts off these crazy lines uh crazy questions and bruce willis samuel jackson they're working together trying to figure out what it means what the answer is trying to call him back in time or when he has them trying to get from one location to another but the time is virtually impossible so they're having to cut corners and go through the park and I really enjoy the hurdles that he makes our two main heroes go through. You eventually find out that Simon, his last name is Gruber. He is indeed Hans Gruber's brother. Alan Rickman from the first movie. I love not only the connection and the reference to that, but I love the fact that here's a villain that specifically targeted McLean. He has a vendetta against McLean. This is a personal story. This is a personal revenge plot. And any diehard movie, they usually go with the whole wall. He just so happens to be conveniently in this situation and has to save the day. And I get that's the premise. That's what the first movie works with. But this makes sense. This makes sense to do a sequel where it is somebody from his past or connect to the past going after him. So I like all of that. And the thing about this movie, the way how it works so well, it's almost shocking. It's shocking because this script was rewritten. Originally, it was just supposed to be a standalone action film that eventually got turned into Speed 2 Cruise Control because it was supposed to take place on a ship. Can you imagine if they went with this? Luckily, Bruce Willis turned that down, hated it. And then it was supposed to be another movie that was supposed to star Brandon Lee and be a vehicle for his big action career. And that didn't happen. And then they wrote it to be a Lethal Weapon sequel. But then they turned that script and just reworked it to be a Die Hard movie. And it's funny, once I heard that it was supposed to be a Lethal Weapon movie, it all makes sense. I could totally see this movie, this plot, and these two characters being Lethal Weapon. It would work as a Lethal Weapon movie. In fact, I almost want to see that, but I do like how they worked it into Die Hard. I do like what Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson are able to do with these two characters. They do have great chemistry. I do like seeing them work together and argue with each other because it's fun, them going back and forth. One other thing I want to mention is Holly. Holly is John McClane's wife, who I mentioned that the actress, she does not come back ever for the rest of these sequels. They do reference her a lot more here than they ever have before or will again. And it just, it sucks. It sucks not only to see in the story that they're no longer together, that they're separated and that he hasn't talked to her for a year. In fact, the scene where he tells Jackson that he, they had a fight and he hasn't called her in a year and Samuel Jackson laughs at him. It's like, yeah. They do kind of make McLean look like an asshole, look like a guy that's like, come on, he's too stubborn. He can't call his wife. I do like the moment, though, where he does call her or makes the attempt to call her. It's at least some hope, a glimmer of hope. I don't know if the actress doesn't want to come back to the franchise or if the writers don't feel like they need to bring her back. They don't care enough to write her, to write her back or bring her back. It sucks. It sucks. But... The action in this movie more than makes up for it. There's so much action here. Bombs going off and the chase going on. I love it. I think this movie's a lot of fun. It's a lot bigger in scale. It's not closed in like the normal Die Hard situations. But, and you could say that this movie started the whole Die Hard premises to make them bigger and grander. Sure, that's true. Sure, this movie did do that, but I think it did it the best. I think it worked the best. I really enjoyed Die Hard with a Vengeance. So guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of the third Die Hard movie? Do you like it as much as I do or do you, are you not that into it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. <laughs>